Here he is. So, Bruce, a yep. spectacular end to your first ever Democratic convention. You got the balloons, you got everything. How was it tonight? Well, that was just remarkable, Janine. Everything about it was just so professional. Uh, it worked up to that, what I thought was a, a, re, a remarkably good speech by Hillary Clinton. And then, of course, this fantastic finale with the balloons, uh, the, the ticker tape, the red, white and blue. It couldn't be uh, more American if they dropped apple pies on the, on the audience. It was, it was just fantastic. And, uh, you know, and I think she's really thrown the gauntlet down to Donald Trump. Uh, she's, I think, stolen some of his... His arguments as well, particularly when she started talking about protecting American jobs. So uh, it's an interesting uh, phase that we're entering into in this campaign right now. Well, it's I really game on. It is. And I spoke to Zach from CNN earlier. I made the point that it was an unusual last night because you had ex-Republicans, a Reagan speechwriter, you had a four-star general. At moments, you could have been mistaken for thinking you were at a Republican convention. Well, I think it just goes to show how many uh, mainstream Republicans are very anxious about Donald Trump. You would have seen her talking about you know, how dangerous it is to allow him to have his finger on the nuclear trigger. And, uh, and I think four-star generals and, and mainstream Republicans would absolutely agree with that. I mean, the, the image that they're presenting now of Donald Trump is, frankly, somebody who's a bit flaky. Uh, who is erratic and, uh, and really is not ready for such an important position as the presidency. It almost reminds me of the uh, 1964 campaign, which I was not here for either, uh, where uh, Barry Goldwater, of course, wanted to drop a nuclear bomb on Hanoi and, uh, and uh, LBJ and his team ran a very hard fear campaign about the prospect of, uh, gold, um, uh, of Barry Goldwater starting another world war, another nuclear war. And I think she was steering quite close to that tonight. It was very interesting. Well, obviously, for the people in the room, it brought the party together after a, a, a bumpy week. But this is really aimed, as you said, at the audience, the television audience. It's so professional. It's the Super Bowl of politics. How do you think it will play? out there. Mm. Oh, I think this will play very well for them. Uh, you know, they started off, as you said, very uh, bumpily. Uh, we had that whole problem about the leaked emails, the chairwoman of the DNC being forced to resign uh, before the convention even got underway. It was not looking good, but every day it got a little better uh, right up to tonight, of course, when we've seen this thing, which is, you know, it's like a combination of the Olympics, the Oscars and the Emmys all rolled into one. It's, it's like nothing I've ever seen before. And, uh, and of course, there's even a little bit of politics thrown in as well to make it really entertaining. Only uh, a bit of, it, of politics, uh, I'd say, Bruce. They did great theatre, great spectacle. Yeah, great theatre. Only a bit of politics, though. Not a lot no, on the policies. there was a policies. lot of politics. Not a lot of policies like we're used to, but that's fine. I'll... The other side didn't either. I'm going to ask you for your first convention, what was your <laughs> low point or where do you think they missed this week and what was the highlight? Start with what you thought they didn't do well or where they missed it. Well, uh, yeah, uh, they, these things go for a long time, Janine. They go for about four hours in the evening. And uh, there's a long build-up during the night to, to the actual main act. And, uh, you know, you'd see about 30 people coming out and, and giving uh, speeches, and which were basically repeating essentially the same thing, that Hillary Clinton is a very good and decent person and ready to be president. I think they could have cut a lot of that right back, but they, uh, they didn't. Uh, you know, you could actually concertina a lot of these uh, events, I think. But, of course, I think there's a lot of politics, too, as to who gets to speak on the floor and up on the podium. Uh, so those issues aren't easily resolved. Um, the high points, well, there were several. I think Bernie Sanders' intervention when he stopped the count uh, on, the, uh, on the vote and said, now it's time for us to, uh, to, to nominate Hillary Clinton as our candidate on acclamation. I thought that was a very dramatic intervention mm -hmm. and a very a unifying one. Uh, uh, of course, Michelle Obama's speech, everyone agrees that was fantastic. Bill Clinton's uh, rather 
humorous and sometimes uh, touching uh, tribute to his wife. But the real high point, of course, was Hillary Clinton's speech tonight. It wasn't an harangue uh, that I thought perhaps might have happened. It was a very measured speech that uh, built up uh, to uh, you know strong points throughout you know, uh, a speech which must have gone for close to an hour. I thought that was the high point. And then, of course, you saw the balloons, the ticker tape, you know, as only the Americans can do. It was, it was fantastic. And uh, I think people at home would have been transfixed by it. Another one that, that hit a high point tonight, if you look at social media and you were watching, was uh, the father of a Muslim soldier who was killed, Mr Khan and his wife, uh, where he offered to give the Constitution to Donald Trump. Uh, that seemed to really get uh, hit a note too tonight. Yes, uh, I mean, there's a sense amongst uh, a lot of Americans that, well, one, that you know, he is disparaging American servicemen and sacrifice that they've made. I think that's, a, uh, that's something which they're playing up, on, uh, you know, playing up big. Uh, and they also think that he's probably flouting, uh, you know, some... He has the potential to be running very close to the wind on constitutional issues. So uh, these things are very held very dear, close to the hearts of Americans. And, of course, we're in Philadelphia, where both the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution were drafted and promulgated in a place called Independence Hall, which is not more than about two miles from here. Well, a very um, historic time, town. It is, and, and uh, of course we know that they're going to all go out on a high tonight, but now the hard work starts. I think they've got 100 days. As you said, a very stark choice, obviously, now yeah. uh, on both sides. I haven't seen what uh, Donald Trump's tweeted about the speech, but talking around uh, the convention centre, talking to the delegates, uh, do they still give Donald Trump a chance? Is this going to be a hard fight, and where do you think it's going to end up. <clears throat> I think there's real concern about Donald Trump uh, amongst people I've spoken to, delegates and just members of the public. No one is taking him for granted. You know, he's a bit of a Freddy Krueger. He keeps coming back when uh, he really should have been disposed of a long time, given the erratic nature of his behaviour, you know, some of the things he says about people, the way in which he's disparaged women, gays, uh, the disabled, uh, Hispanics, blacks. You know, you go on, the list goes on forever, and yet he still continues to be competitive. So people are concerned about that and they know that this is going to be a hard-fought campaign. Uh, they're comforted, though, by the fact that uh, Hillary Clinton does have a good standing with women, particularly, and we saw a lot of that in this campaign, uh, sorry, in this, uh, in this convention, focused very much on women and young girls uh, and opportunities for them because they've really got to come out in numbers to offset the angry white male vote who could very well win this election for, uh, for, for Donald Trump if those women and other minority groups don't come out and vote on the day. So you won't hear anybody saying that this election's in the bag. They're going to be stressing how close it's going to be right down to uh, you know, that, uh, what is it, the second Tuesday in November. And just finally, have you got any ideas do you think we could do with a bit of the razzmatazz in our launches? They were all a bit sad the last election. <laughs> Yeah, it sort of uh, leaves the old Sydney Town Hall uh, <laughs> looking a, a little bit pale by comparison, doesn't it? Uh, look, you could, uh, you could, but uh, we're a, probably a little bit more self-deprecating in Australia, aren't we? And uh, but Americans have got incredible self-belief. Uh, you know, you can't you can't say enough times that this is the greatest country on earth, and these are the greatest people, you know, who will uh, respond to any crisis with uh, with strength and determination. Uh, there's incredible self-belief here. I, you know, I've seen it in the in the in the ordinary people that have come up and and stood at the podium and addressed the crowd. Everyone's articulate. Everyone's passionate and believes in their cause. This is a very politicised country. It's uh, it's actually very refreshing. People wear their politics on their sleeve, and we're going to see much more of that between now and November. All right. Well, I'll let you get to the party while well, there's still a few balloons left, and we look forward to catching up with you when you're back in Australia. Thank you so much for your time tonight. It's very late, Bruce Hawker.